Bomba Cloud, shoot the pan fire, man. It's a top, Mr. Selector. Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. I know you're gonna dig this. This is Maestro in association with Supreme Boxing, and I'm here with the one and only uh, promoter extraordinaire, Hall of Famer, former U.S. attorney. I could go on and on and on. Mr. Bob Arum, how are you doing, Bob? Really good, really good. Nice to be back uh, east. I'm, I'm a New Yorker, even though I live in the other part of the country now. But it's always nice to come back. Very interesting you mentioned that. We're here in Newark, New Jersey, of course, for the Shakur Stevenson fight. You did do a lot of promoting of, of Terrence Crawford in the past in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, this is obviously another big hometown fight in a big arena. Can you speak, Bob, about placing fighters in their home markets and how that's kind of fit into your strategy as a promoter? Well, it always has made a lot of sense to us, I guess, to us are the promoters. If you get a kid like Jose Ramirez, who comes from the Central Valley, uh, why look for other locations when he's so popular in Fresno, where you put 10, 12,000 people in of real fans? Uh, same thing with Shakur here in Newark. That This is... Uh, an, uh, an arena where uh, he, ha he, I mean, his fans can reach and come and don't have to travel a long way to watch him fight. With Terrence, it was the same thing in Omaha. You know, every year we would go back to Omaha and uh, uh, have him fight uh, in the uh, arena that they have there and we'd, we'd pack it so I mean it, it makes all the sense and then the hope is that <coughs> if they have a real big big fight we have to charge a lot of money and you do it in Las Vegas that the fans will travel we learned that so many years ago in the 80s uh, with uh, uh, marvelous Marvin Hagler and Tommy Hearns, you know, with Hagler all, where, where, as soon as a fight was announced in Vegas with Hagler, we'd have orders for five to 10,000 tickets from New England and f with Tommy from the Detroit area. So, you know, the, 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 this isn't unique. Uh, now, uh, we have this heavyweight, uh, Jared Anderson, He's a great fighter, uh, and I think a potentially uh, a future heavyweight champion, great personality, and if he's successful on Saturday, uh, his next fight will be in uh, Toledo, Ohio, where we'll, we, you know, the, the whole town is already going crazy. Right, much like Terrence in Omaha, Shakur here, right? That is correct, Terrence. Would, would, would brought in tremendous number of fans, including Warren Buffett. Yeah. Uh, man, many of those fans didn't start out as boxing fans, but became boxing fans. Well, there you go. The lightweight division is arguably the most stacked division in, in the sport of boxing. You've obviously made a big investment into the 135 pound weight class. Is the plan to match the winner of this fight against the winner of Lomachenko Haney on, on May 20th? Yeah, well, that, that, that's why this is an elimination match. And uh, uh, with Lomachenko and Haney, if Loma wins, definitely we would do that. If Haney wins, I think he's having trouble at 135 and he'll probably be going to 140, so that'll clear up uh, the lightweight division, 
and there'll be a lot of opportunities for not only Shakur, but Keyshawn Davis and fighters at 135. There you go. It's interesting you mentioned it's Keyshawn Davis. I spoke to him yesterday. I also spoke to uh, Anthony Can You Dig It, Yig It. And I asked them to name their top fighters at 135. And one name kept coming up. It's, it's Javante Tank Davis, who, of course, has that catchweight fight later this month in Vegas against Ryan Garcia. Do you see it as being a possibility to match your guys against Tank Davis, given the network and promotional affiliations? I don't think the network involvement is that important, particularly if we're going to be doing uh, pay-per-view, because then uh, ESPN uh, would distribute pay-per-view to its world. Uh, Showtime would distribute pay for you to I its world. Every every other outlet would be able to uh, access the fight on pay per view. So I don't think that's a problem anymore, really, if people are smart about it. Uh, uh, and and Tank Davis uh, is certainly uh, uh, a talented kid. Uh, as is Ryan Garcia. That's yeah. a very good fight. I'm interested in watching that fight. Well, who do you favor right now in that fight? I think Tank. But again, if Ryan Garcia pulls an upset, it wouldn't surprise me that much. But I think Tank body of work is much more comprehensive than Ryan Garcia's. Do you see a stoppage, a decision victory? Well, you know, Tank is a big puncher. And so stoppage is possible. But it depends on how the fight plays out, you know? Yeah. If, you know, you, people say stoppage, but if it turns into a boxing match, you know, the chances of a stoppage are diminished. Absolutely. Now, a lot of fans were very excited about the possibility of Tyson Fury taking on Alexander Rusik. Uh, I listened to a few interviews you gave where you essentially said that the money's too big in Saudi Arabia to essentially turn down. Um, is it fair to say that, you know, you're waiting for, for later this year for Saudi? Obviously, it's too hot in the middle of the summer to do a fight there. And with Ramadan, it wouldn't have been possible now. So is, is that something that you're looking forward to later in the year? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, when we were negotiating uh, the... Uh, uh, the Tyson Fury Usyk fight, and Tyson Fury we co-promote uh, with Queensberry, uh, but Usyk is managed by our friend Igus Klimas, and and we're very close. You know, I'm a personal friend of Usyk. But again, what was always hanging over that negotiation, where the Saudis had promised such big money to do the fight uh, November, December of this year that it was very, very hard for the fighters when they realized what was available uh, for them to really get behind it. It made so much business sense to wait until the winter. There you go. In the interim, is is uh, is a fight with with Anthony Joshua on the table? What were your thoughts of his performance, and is that a good fight right now for Tyson Fury? Yeah, it's a great fight for Tyson Fury, but I don't think <coughs> talking to Eddie Hearn that will get Joshua in the ring with Fury, because Joshua looked awful in the his last fight, and. He looks like a fighter who lacks complete confidence. So I don't know if and when that fight ever happens. There you go, Bob. Thank you so much for your time. I'm looking forward to tomorrow's fight. Yeah, me too. Thank you.